Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing really good. It is a whole new year and I've got one here that I feel like might just have a story behind it. So initially, this was registered with the description of backlight not working, iPhone 6S Plus black screen, when and how can I send my phone for repair and where to? So this is not a customer that has asked me for a price or like tried to get me locked in at some really, really low amount before they sent me a loaded mess. Included with this device is a note that reads, Dear Jason, how are you? I watched you on YouTube and I was very impressed. I sent my iPhone to two local repair shop and they were scammers. Both only replace parts, but they lie to customers that they can do work like you. My iPhone fell on the floor and screen stopped working, dark screen. But at that time, I was still able to receive calls and I could tell that phone was on. After I took to two local repair, nothing works now. I bought a new phone, but I would like to see if you can do your magic on this one. You have my permission to put it on YouTube if you want. Let's see what we got here. So the bottom Penelope screws, they are actually in it, but they're not through the screen. So we'll just go ahead and open this right up. Now I can feel right away too that the screen is separating from the bezel. So if repaired, this phone would need a new screen or at least need the glass glued back on. All right, let's see what we got here, fellas. Let's just open it right on. Oh my, what is that? Somebody has put like a, a fiberglass something or rather over where the CPU shield normally would be. Now it has the texture of fiberglass, but it seems to have the color of copper. That's rather horrifying. It also has another classic sign of being absolutely manhandled. Right here in the crack of that front facing flex cable, you will see that that has been torn. So that's something that needs replaced. I've got a sneaky feeling that somebody has destroyed our odds of this being a viable repair. I see our long screw is missing. Sometimes that screw gets removed to hide the evidence. You know, this screw will be missing, nowhere to be found, yet one of the other screw holes will have a hole all the way through the logic board. Let's get our battery disconnected. There we go. Now we need our screen assembly out of the way so that we can get an idea of what sort of carnage may be going on underneath. And believe me, there will most likely be carnage. So first let's decide what in the world the last guy has done to this thing. I am glad to see that this does appear to be fiberglass. Uh, this is some sort of like fiberglass tape. It is not copper. So let's go ahead and just get that out of the way. Holy smokes. Look at what is going on with the CPU. Let's clean this off with some alcohol so you can get a better look. The RAM on top of this CPU is bulging. Now, I don't mean like a little bit bulging. I mean, it is like a lot bulging. This is something that is typically caused by heat. It may even be just a little bit hard to see without both eyeballs or stereographic imaging, but the center of the CPU is actually bulged way up and it's cracked right here. See right, right here, you can see our beloved crack. The RAM on the A9 CPU, it is really sensitive, so it doesn't take a whole lot of heat for this to happen. What in the world were they working on? So just out of curiosity, I've got the board out of this thing. And on the bottom of it, it seems to have the stickers in place, but they've been off and then put back on. But it has a strange name on the bottom of it. It has like, I don't know, somebody else's name on there. That's not the name of my customer. Let's see what's going on under these stickers. Let's peel this one off. Ugh. Ugh. Why do, you know, I'm not really sure why people do this. This sticker has actually been glued back on here with adhesive. Mmm, isn't this just lovely? This is some sort of a liquid adhesive that was put on here and then dried. 
and the purpose of that was only to hold the sticker, that like EMI thermal stickery thing on the bottom of the board. So it looks like they were indeed having trouble with image. This is our chestnut IC. This IC is responsible for creating the voltages that we need to turn on the display. Oh look, we have ball squeezage. Mm. Let's just get that out of the way. Now I have had the image problem be our little chestnut coil over here, but that is just like whenever it's popped loose. And I'm going to say by the crookedness of this one, uh, they've already covered that. So I think it's pretty safe to say that these people were troubleshooting a no image issue, hopefully. But the reason why this thing went from having no image to having just like nothing whatsoever is because while the chestnut IC was being worked on, the heat caused the RAM on the A9 CPU to swell, and this thing is no longer powering on. Many of these components over here are responsible for getting power from the chestnut circuitry on the other side of the board up here to the display connector. Now, right here we have a big old glob of solder that one of the last techs has put into place, and that was to, you know, they're just bridging a filter or something, I, I hope. So let's just see what the board view has to say about it. We're gonna zoom right in on that spot. Yep, sure enough, we are looking at FL4205. FL4205 just has a big old glob of solder across it, so that is okay. You know, let's just go ahead and get some readings here. I'm curious. Let's get my meter turned on. Now, I no longer believe that this board is a good candidate for repair. I think that repairing this board would be just begging for a warranty nightmare. I really don't think the mission here is recovery. I think this guy is more just wanting to figure out what happened to his phone. So let's just have a look here. I've got my meter set to diode mode. I'm going to put my red probe on ground, and I'm going to use my black probe to do the probing. And first we'll check right here. It's a 0.47. That is an acceptable reading, 0.46. A 1.5 on that one. Is that acceptable? It is, because if we reverse it, we get a lower reading, so that is just a reverse bias line. Now our third pin up, we're getting a 0 0.58. I'll take it. Fourth, 0.27. Now, a 0.27, that's okay if that's, uh, you know, a 1V8 line, I think. Which one was that? EP 1V8 LCM cons. So that is a completely acceptable reading. Now, I haven't found anything yet to prevent this thing from getting an image. Fifth pin, 0.63. So we're getting an open line on our eighth pin. If I remember right, I think that is okay. Mamba to LCM drive con, hmm, something to do with the other connector. So that's going to be completely fine. There are other things we need to be concerned about. So our chestnut enable line is good. Our LCM reset line is good. Just go ahead and go down through here and see if there's any really, really strange readings. Uh, what is that we've got ground on? Is there supposed to be ground there? That's one, two, three, four, five, six pins up from the bottom. And if we look at Flexboard View, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Now on here, Flexboard View says it's not connected, but I'm actually reading ground. I'm going to go ahead and check up through here because we do need these I2C lines and stuff to get image. And also, these connectors are really finicky about pins getting recessed. So it is entirely possible that somebody pulled their hair out over a recessed pen. I've done it. Hmm, so I'm actually not finding any really strange readings with the power circuit. Let's check these image data lines. There is basically five image chokes here. So we'll get data line, data line, ground, data line, data line, ground, and it just repeats. So we've got a 0.35 on the first one. And then a 0.35 on the second one. And the pattern just repeats. You get uh, connection, connection, ground. Yeah, and that's all completely normal. So how about our six volt boost line on the back of the board? PP6V0 underscore LCM underscore boost. This line is also not shorted. Hmm. I think what may have happened to this board, okay, just, just, just hear me out here. Just, in, just some educated thinking. It's really common for these boards to have a short 
on uh, the chestnut power lines, like after a drop, they just psh, have a short. The phone will boot, but it no longer gets an image. Now, this one does look like it could be a slight bit liquid damaged right there around that one cap there by the connector. But I think this may have had a short to ground on the chestnut power circuit. And I say that because this one capacitor here is missing. It's sort of just been ripped off. And over here, we've got what looks like could be a slight hint of liquid damage. I think that's more likely from being scraped. So it's like they went after the chestnut IC first before finding the short to ground on the power circuit. It's really hard to say for sure because I'm not finding any abnormalities with the, the diode mode readings on the connector. Now, I have mostly only seen RAM swollen like this from heat, but I have had my suspicions of it just happening spontaneously. However, this board has the A9 RAM swollen, but then it also has had rework on the chestnut area, which is directly on the other side of that CPU. Yeah, I'm not just going to sit here and act all high and mighty. I mean, this is a mistake that I've made before doing the exact same thing for what looks to be probably the exact same problem. Wait a minute, is this a board I've worked on before? It's really important to bring these things up to temp slow and let the heat spread out. I always try to heat these things up as evenly as I can and then just move in and just zip right in on the one spot that I need to melt. It is excruciatingly easy to accidentally swell the A9 RAM. I'm really not sure why this thing wasn't getting an image. I believe the guy whenever he said that he could hear it, he could feel it, he could everything but see the image. This is not a good candidate for repair. I mean, this would be a warranty nightmare and I've reached a point in my life where I just, I really like to sleep at night. I have only just begun to have success with this level of rework, but if you want to see this type of thing happening, check out Rescue on YouTube. Ben has some awesome videos online of this sort of thing being done like in real time. So leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Is the RAM being damaged something that happened from the drop? Or do you think this is something that happened as a result from the prior rework? I'm going to get in touch with the customer and offer them the possibility of data recovery and uh, see where they want to go from there. But this is definitely not one that I will approach for repair. So that is going to be the end of this video. I really thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Have a good day. So there must be at least four of you. No, wait six of you that are curious about what this would do on a DC power supply. So let's find out. We're going to put the power supply on the screen and push the button to boot in one, two, three. Boot. We are drawing 60 milliamps. We are drawing 80 milliamps. Zero. 60, 80, zero. 60, 80, zero.